Good morning, good afternoon to you. It's April 5th, 2024, and we've got a lot of weather to talk about, so I'm back here on the Extra Channel with all of the details. We've got two storm systems that we're watching, actually three, maybe four, so let's dive right into that. We're going to start off with a slight risk of severe weather tomorrow in the plains here in Nebraska and Kansas. You've got yourselves a slight risk of severe weather on Saturday, April 6th. This is mostly driven by a hail and wind threat, but I would be lying to you if I said there was no tornado threat at all. This is what the radar could look like as we go into the future, showing you that storm setup. This is the one that's caused all of our problems over the past couple of days with severe weather and snow from Wisconsin down into Texas, up into Kentucky and Ohio, and then yesterday in the Mid-Atlantic, and now just some lingering snow squalls in the Northeast. It's going to try to get out of here, but it is going to spin there for a moment, leaving some pretty impressive snow bands in Maine. So Maine, you guys can get a couple of inches of snow out of this before it's all set and done. And this storm is also just kind of driving down cooler air into the Great Lakes region, the Northeast, and basically the entire East Coast, keeping us all below average for a little while longer. But over here, you can see our next storm system is already trying to bring up some warmer air from the Pacific, and that's going to combine with some Gulf of Mexico energy here in a moment. And you'll see what happens here on Saturday, an explosion of thunderstorms right in our slight risk area. Okay, so right now, these look mostly elevated. These don't look like surface-based thunderstorms. The dew points aren't incredibly high, so I don't see a huge tornado threat here, but a hail and wind threat is almost certainly going to be a problem as these storms become linear and outflow dominant fairly quickly as they race up towards portions of Iowa and Missouri, Kansas City. You guys are probably going to get a pretty good storm there around 11 p.m. on Saturday as the cool air once again tries to work in behind this storm, bringing heavy snow to Wyoming, Montana, and portions of Nebraska early in the morning on Sunday. Now, this storm threat is going to continue into Sunday as well. This only goes out to 2 p.m. on Sunday, but you can see the swirling motion of our storm continues, and there's going to be a lot of warm, moist air coming out in front of this. The cool air is still driving in this way, so we expect for there to be at least some storms re-sparking along this boundary here between Illinois and the Gulf of Mexico. And that would explain the expansive marginal risk of severe weather on April 7th here. This includes portions of Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, down into the mid-Mississippi River Valley, into Louisiana as well. And right now, once again, very similarly to what we were looking at on Saturday in the Plains, this looks like mostly an elevated hail and wind threat. The tornado threat looks very low right now. Now, as we go all the way into Monday, we do expect for there to be some resurgence of moisture on the tail end of the cold front here that kind of leads to another secondary low that produces another severe weather threat down here in Texas and the Red River Valley. And of course, this overlaps with the path of totality for our total solar eclipse here. So let's watch this whole thing play out. Here's our storm system that's going to cause our intermittent severe weather over the next couple of days. And here's what the weather map could look like around 2 p.m. on Monday. This is when the solar eclipse will be occurring. It's going to start around 1 p.m. down here, 2 to 3 p.m., 3 to 4 p.m. That's considering time zones. That's around when the totality is going to be occurring. So for the most part, it looks like precipitation will be missing the path of totality, except for maybe over here in northwestern Pennsylvania and, of course, a little bit of southern Texas. The precipitation doesn't really start increasing until we get later in the day on Monday. This is our slight risk of severe weather right here. This is when our storms are going to be popping up. So in the best case scenario, we're not going to have too much cloud cover down here during the solar eclipse early in the day. However, the European model's cloud cover forecast is pretty unsettling if you're planning on going out and trying to view the eclipse, we still have this broad cloud cover that is expected from Dallas through Little Rock up through St. Louis, Indianapolis, into Ohio as well. The only place where it looks like it's going to be certainly clear is up here in northern Vermont, New Hampshire, and portions of Maine. If you are somebody who would do anything to see the eclipse and budget isn't a problem, you got to go to Maine, okay? Otherwise, the rest of us are going to have to just hope for peaks in the clouds. It looks like that is going to be a little bit more likely, potentially over here in Illinois, Indiana and Ohio as there is a clear slot trying to break in. GFS looks a little worse for places like St. Louis, Dallas, down through Little Rock, but it does show a clear slot up here in the Ohio Valley once again. So me personally, this is where I'm probably going to end up going. I'm going to try to view the eclipse somewhere up here and just hope for the best. I don't want to go all the way to Maine. I would have probably flown down to Texas if that was going to be clear, but nope. It's looking like that's almost certainly going to be too cloudy down there to 
really see anything. Remember, members of our main channel, Ryan Hall, y'all, are going to get to see our exclusive live stream of the solar eclipse. It's just going to be kind of like a fun thing. You'll see the behind the scenes and the vehicle as we drive down, and then you'll see our reactions to the eclipse. We don't have any major sun-focused photography methods set up right now, but we will have a stream up of the eclipse as it's happening. And then what happens from there is our Omega block is going to let up. We're going to get potentially a storm system or two, try to dig up through this way and bring some rain to the southeast over the next few days into the middle portion of next week. This will be our last little bout of cooler air in the east. And then I think once we get into the middle of April, we are going to enter a very extended period of at least an attempt at ridging in the southeast. Okay, so there's going to be a high pressure system that builds up here and we're going to see for maybe an extended period of time some really nice weather and some really warm weather maybe until like the 20th of April. Now up here in the northeast unfortunately there's a couple lobes of lower pressure and lower heights that are going to try to stick around. This will bring around some precipitation that falls in this area and it'll keep temperatures cooler up there. We also are going to have quite significant ridging in the west so it's going to be really warm and nice in the west which means that the weather is going to be mostly quiet for the vast majority of us as we go forward. Now the ridging is going to continue in the east coast and probably get more significant once again around the 20th but look at that we have a real bona fide trough setting up in the west on Sunday April 21st ridging in the east. This is the perfect setup for a potential major severe weather system okay so we're going to watch this if this actually swings through interacts with all the warm air that's been building up over here we are pretty much certainly going to have a severe weather outbreak and that might be the next one that we have to watch closely here as we go forward. The good news is the overall result from this pattern is going to be much above average temperatures for the vast majority of us through the next two weeks. So enjoy your fun in the sun while it exists out there. I do believe we're going to have a pretty stormy late April and early May. So once again, enjoy the nice weather this April as long as it lasts and as long as you get it. And before we end this video, I do want to remind you, I get questions every day. People ask me, you know, what weather station do you recommend? And it's still to this day, the Tempest Weather Station by Weatherflow. Have you ever wanted to have your very own home personal weather station? Like something that you can put in your backyard that tells you in real time what the dew point, temperature, wind speed, and direction, and all that good stuff is? Well, guess what? I have figured out which one is actually the best, and I have acquired them for our site, shopryanhall.com. It's called the Tempest Weather System. I put one of these bad boys up, and it works like a dream. As a weather enthusiast since birth, I've had a lot of these things, and this is by far the easiest one to install, and it just looks the best. It doesn't look like a big dumaflachi up there. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, but the app is daggone great. It also keeps up with all of your historical weather data in these really cool charts. And the coolest part is, if you opt in, you can share all of this weather data that you're collecting with the National Weather Service, and ultimately me, so that we can make our algorithms and forecasting services even better in the future. We also have a bunch of cool accessories on the site, including these smaller portable weather meters. These handheld devices sync up with your phone and can give you weather info on the go. Here's a video of me testing one out in a severe thunderstorm in Tennessee. I forgot to screen record on my phone, but that was a 50 mile an hour wind gust. So y'all, this is the real deal. There is no better personal weather station on the market. And that's all the weather I have for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.